So today I want to make a quick video on my power inverter setup. Uh, as you see here, I have two on my wall there. Um, one is a pure sine wave power inverter and the second is a modified sine wave inverter. You can see the difference in the wave of the electricity. Pure sine wave is how you want to power your more sensitive electronics. It's the um, type power that you would get off of a grid situation. Uh, the black one is my main inverter and the green and black one is my backup. So as you can see I have power running to both here. So even though I do have that hooked up for power, it is not running. It is completely off, so it is not draining any power. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side of the black inverter, that would be the one up here. I have two very small extension cords basically that I made out of I think it is 10, I think a 10-2 or 10-3 wire. It is extremely stiff, so it's very thick, very thick wire. Those two leads go over to those outlets in the corner, and they feed up to the house through the uh, um, UV-resistant um, I think it's a ground rated uh, 10 or a 12 3 um, power wire. Um, so I would like to explain a little bit more on the left hand side there where the uh, power is coming out of the inverter. So we'll just scooch on over there and take a kind of good gander at that. So this is the AC side of the power inverter. Let's see if I can get in there a little bit better so you can see which one exactly it is. So those are just simple three prong plugins that run to these outlets. And you can see these wires here. Those are the gray wires that run up to the house. So some of you have been wondering why I have two power inverters because I've had power inverters fail. This one here is a power jack 8000 watt low frequency pure sine wave inverter. I've had nothing but problems with that inverter so that's why it is sitting on the ground. It is no longer operational. I had high hopes for it because it uh, could sense grid connection. So like if I hardwired my generator to it, it would double as a um, battery charger. I believe it was a 100 or 120 amp battery charger. So unfortunately it doesn't work. So in the event of this inverter failing, which I have had once already. I uh, took it apart, looked it around, and hooked it back up, and it magically started working again. That uh, inverter is no longer under that label, but I do see this type of inverter on eBay. I will post a picture to the uh, listing on eBay here. This inverter, um, I got it at the local parts store. Just a uh, run-of-the-mill modified sine wave. So in the event of this one failing, all I have to do is take those two connections, which is just a standard plug-in, unplug them, move them down here, plug them in, turn the power on. 
and then voila, power back to the house. So while that one's in service or I'm finding a replacement for it, I'll still have a decent inverter lickety split very quickly uh, given power to the house again. So that's the reason I did that. Um, one thing I don't see a whole lot of people doing is putting on these noise filters. Uh, I did notice that it helped a lot. Some uh, uh, devices were either humming or not performing quite as well. I put that uh, magnet over that and it seemed to reduce the um, that humming or noises that you can get from some. I don't think all inverters do that, but in the case of uh, modified sine wave or even uh, some cheaper pure sine waves, that they'll do that. Um, this inverter here does come with a remote. I believe I forgot to back up the house, but I will insert a picture of it here. It is a wireless remote, and unfortunately, with the distance I have up to my house, it does not reach that far. So that is unfortunate because I want to know what voltage my battery bank is from my house, and I have absolutely no way to tell from there. So I have to come all the way down to the shed, which is probably a 75-yard walk to get down here to uh, check out my voltage. We did have some pretty good sun today. Get home after work and the voltage is about 13 volts. Thank goodness, because I'm so tired of running the power generator, the homemade one that is. Um, I am running, I believe it is double aught power cable. Uh, very fine braided. The finer the wire, the better. If you get to some of these cables that have uh, very thick copper wires in it, don't use that. That stuff is junk. You want something closer that resembles like a welding wire where all the finer, the, the strands of copper are a lot finer. So, I probably don't need that much gauge for the wires because it's only a 2 in 3500 watt. Uh, inverter, but it's always better to go over on that kind of situation than under so you don't have your voltage loss. As you can see, I have some, for the lack of better bar, uh, better words, they're like bus bars. So I have a bunch of positives going to the positive, and then a bunch of negatives going to the negative. And the uh, charge controllers, of course, feed to those, and it's separates the power out more or less and uh, the inverters drain the power out outwise more or less a little more equally versus having you know like the power on one end versus the other so that way one battery is not taking more abuse than the other it's kind of spread out that way Other than that one failure I had last January, February, I've been relatively happy with this. Um, I don't run a lot of uh, high wattage electronics. The only thing that really consumes a lot of power in my house is my refrigerator. And the fridge does dim the lights down quite a bit when that kicks on. So I would say I would probably go to maybe a 5,000 watt on my next inverter if I needed one. Maybe a 6,000. Or I've seen some really nice inverters that are only two to 3,000 watts but have maybe a eight, nine, or 10,000 surge. Some surges only hold for a millisecond, two, three seconds. 
I've seen some Ames power inverters that will actually power the surge for 60 seconds. So I think that's more or less what you want to look for is the, uh, the higher surge and the longer surge when looking in for an, uh, an inverter. Um, this inverter was relatively inexpensive. I think it was 135 or something. I will uh, find my purchase history on eBay and I will post it now. And so it has a nice little LED display on the side there, which is hard to see because I have to put my head around the cabinet to look this way. That's why I wish that remote would have worked. Uh, it does have USB ports, which I don't know why you'd really need that. I was hoping that uh, that controller, that wireless controller, would also run off the wired because it does have a mini USB or micro USB port on it. But it turns out that's just for charging the uh, panel. So that didn't work out too well. Um, I'm not going to be standing down here charging any devices off the USB, but maybe somebody's situation, they would need USB ports. Uh, this inverter is a decent inverter. I have not had to use it much. Um, it is a retail inverter, so it's not like a super cheap one. Maybe we should power it on real quick. If I can find the power button. It's probably on this side. There it is. I like that bright red display. It's kind of nice. It's easier to see that way. There we go. It's off. So, um, I guess that's all I really have to go over on the inverters. If I think of any more, maybe I'll just cut it in the videos or something. Um, I really like your guys' questions about my setup, so go ahead and keep them coming. Um, I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. I do work a full-time job, so uh, sometimes I don't uh, get to my notifications quite quickly. So just hang in there, and I'll get to your uh, questions as soon as I can. Um, we're only, uh, last I saw, one subscriber away from hitting 100. Um, I think that's pretty amazing. I mean, I've only been doing these videos for uh, two and a half weeks, three weeks maybe, three weeks. So we, I had three subscribers starting out from some old videos. So in three weeks time, going from three to a hundred is not too shabby in my opinion. So it tells me that uh, there's people out there that like this type of stuff. They want to see this type of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and keep on making videos and do what I'm doing. Um, I like uh, using my Dell laptop for editing. I run Linux on it. They have a lot of really good movie editing software on there. Still getting used to it. I know nothing about movie editing until I started doing these videos. Uh, I recently just started making my own uh, loop tunes or music off some websites. So I hope you guys are enjoying the music. Uh, I hate those little copyright notifications that you get from uh, YouTube about playing other people's songs. Even if uh, the website says you're free to use this on YouTube. YouTube still hits that little copyright notification on it. So I don't like that. I'm not going to do that no more. So I'm going to go ahead and make my own music. I know it takes up more time, but at least uh, everything's going to be a little more original at that point. So, all right, everyone. Uh, this is Autarky Homestead. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you really liked it, hit that like button. Get that algorithm going. 
Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, let's keep on growing this channel so that uh, other people can see all this cool stuff. Or at least I think it's cool. So I'm having fun out here doing this. All right, everybody. Have a good night.